There were only two players in the entire NBA last season that recorded at least 24 points and six assists per game while shooting at least 40% from three. The first player is, unsurprisingly, Steph Curry, but the second player might be a little bit more surprising. It was Jalen Brunson. Now, you might say that these are cherry-picked stats, but even if you remove that three-point percentage qualifier, there were still only nine players that put up 24 points and six assists a night last season. Seven of those nine players were all-stars, and Jalen Brunson and Trey Young were the only two amongst those players to not get an all-star selection. Jalen Brunson had his work cut out for him last season, going from being the second fiddle alongside Luka Doncic to being one of the primary initiators for the New York Knicks. And that was a task that came with some pretty big expectations. A lot of NBA fans and NBA media as a whole we're really questioning if he was gonna be able to live up to those expectations. Now that we can look back on the 2022-23 season, I think most people would agree that he at least lived up to those expectations. And in my opinion, he exceeded most of those expectations by a pretty wide margin. So in this video, I wanna get into the specifics of how a guy like Brunson can go from playing more of a supporting role alongside Luka Doncic to going to a team like New York, a team that kind of already had an established pecking order and he was able to establish himself and still put up career highs in almost every category and make major strides as both a shot creator and offensive facilitator. Hopefully I'll be able to shed some light on why I think he's one of the most underrated players in the entire league right now. But first, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Factor. If you're anything like me, the last thing you wanna do when you get home from work or get home from school is cook or have to go to the grocery store so you can have something to cook in the first place. That's why I'm excited to be working with Factor because they offer flexible and affordable meal plans that fit any schedule and any lifestyle. I'm a runner and I'm currently in the process of training for a race in November, so it's really important that I'm able to stay on top of my nutrition without having to sacrifice the most important thing that I have, which is time. But that's what I love about Factor. They have meal plans that can fit any lifestyle, any schedule, and they make it so that you never have to wonder if you have enough time to cook. Factor's meals are super simple. All you have to do is take them out of the fridge, pop them in the microwave or your oven, and within minutes, your food is ready. The folks over at Factor are offering my audience a huge discount on your first order. Just head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code alexhoops50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. They make it super simple to adjust your order size if you need to skip a week or if you need to order enough for your family. Factor takes the worst parts of cooking and grocery shopping out of the equation entirely. I'm someone who's never been able to get into the whole meal prep thing. I can't stand having to buy a ton of groceries and spend an entire day cooking meals for myself just so I can have the same thing every single day throughout the week. So why not just get rid of all of that entirely? Just head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code alexhoops50 for 50% 50 off your first factor box. Once again, huge thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. Jalen Brunson showed massive improvement as a shot creator and independent scoring option. One of the biggest pieces of evidence where we can see how much he's improved in this area is if we take a look at how much less he was being assisted on his made field goals. On shots at the rim, there's not a huge difference between the 2022 season and the 2023 season. This is largely due to the fact that Brunson has pretty much always been good at generating his own shot at the basket, only being above 30% in assisted rate once in his career, and that was all the way back during his rookie season. But from three, there's a pretty noticeable difference. He went from being assisted on 81% of his threes in the 2021-22 season to only being assisted on 57% of them in the 2023 season. And it was his first time being under 70% in assisted rate on threes in his career. And then in the mid-range, we get essentially the same story, almost cutting his assisted rate in the mid-range in half from his rookie season 36%. Point being, he doesn't have to have a shot served to him on a platter. He can go out and create his own shot very, very well. Brunson is a 6'2 point guard, 
but he's not a traditional 6'2 point guard because of his bigger frame. He has no problem working his way down low, even though he's not an overly fast athlete and he doesn't really possess outlier leaping ability. He makes up a lot for a lack of raw foot speed with a shifty brand of ball handling and body control. Here he's going to use the Mitchell Robinson screen to get Caruso, one of the best guard defenders in the NBA, caught up behind him and he uses his right arm to keep Caruso back there. He switches hands on the drive to get a good angle on Vucevic, and he times his jump to be able to get the shot up, so it's just out of reach of both Vuce and Caruso. He sees the overplay of the screen from Hartenstein by his defender, and something you'll notice him doing a lot is how he's gonna use his backside to shield the ball from his defender while also keeping them behind him, this gives Hartenstein some time to catch up on the roll, and he makes sure that when he goes up, he's going up behind Hartenstein so that there's no possibility for a contest from the paint. Now what he does on this drive is really interesting. He's going to initially use this high screen from Jericho Sims to get himself going downhill, but as he approaches Cat in the paint, he's going to wait for Sims to go up the middle so that he can switch to his left hand and take an extra long step to the other side of the paint, pulling him out of reach from Anthony Edwards trailing behind him. There's really not a whole lot that you're going to be able to do to rush Jalen Brunson or make him uncomfortable. He's just a really patient player, and he has no issue maintaining control of the ball even when he's dribbling into traffic. Not to mention, he's full of counters even when he's going up against some of the NBA's best guard defenders. And while I did say that Brunson isn't a particularly fast player when handling the ball, he does have really good instincts for timing things like his deceleration, which allows him to ease some defensive pressure so that he can get a little bit more space to work with. His ability to abuse drop coverage is elevated by the fact that he's among the best mid-range shooters in the NBA, clocking in at 49% on over nine mid-range field goal attempts per night, according to cleaningtheglass.com. There were only four players clocking 49% or higher for mid-range last season, and they were Kawhi Leonard, Devin Booker, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant. That's some really elite company for Brunson to be in, and I think it's a testament to the level of talent that he actually has. Throughout the process of making this video, I started to have a theory that Jalen Brunson is probably one of the best point guards at abusing drop coverage in the entire league. And I wanted to try and figure out a way to quantify that. Unfortunately, there's not super extensive tracking data for that. So what I did is I took the mid-range efficiencies of some of the best mid-range shooters in the entire league and combined it with the top pick and roll ball handler points per possession numbers, put those together, and it resulted in a relatively crude metric trick that can give you an idea of just how good Jalen Brunson is at abusing drop coverage in the pick and roll, particularly when taking shots in the mid range. According to this stat, Jalen Brunson is the fifth best in the NBA at punishing drop coverage. Now, obviously there's some noise in that number because not all shots as the pick and roll ball handler are gonna come off of mid range shots, but this still gives a rough idea as to just how effective Brunson is at punishing drop coverage in the pick and roll. When bigs don't step up to him at the elbow, he has zero issue getting to his spot for what are usually pretty much completely uncontested looks. He'll make sure to dribble to the opposite side of Robinson's role here, which limits Aaron Holiday's ability to recover to him, and with the drop coverage sagging off on him so much, gives him a free look. His footwork can oftentimes get bigs off balance, like here when he's dribbling towards Mason Plumley before using an in and out dribble to fake like he's going left, and he's going to plant his left foot at the elbow to send Plumley moving backwards a little bit, and he creates enough space to get off a clean shot. Drop coverage takes a calculated gamble that a player won't be able to knock down shots in the mid range but Brunson is one of the only players in the league that can knock it down at a high enough clip that it makes coaches second guess their decision to sag off. All of this unlocked scoring prowess has opened up a lot of playmaking opportunities for Brunson. If we take a look here, as he's made more shots, he's gotten more assists, which is definitely a crude way of measuring the impact that a player's scoring has on their ability to make plays. But with Brunson, it does make a lot of sense, especially if you take a look at the film. 
One aspect of his playmaking that I love is how good he is at making use of the defensive attention that he receives in the post to make plays for his teammates. He's posting up on Gary Trent Jr. here, and Siakam is waiting to provide help in case Brunson gets by. Brunson's going to capitalize on this by switching to drive towards the nail, and he punishes the lack of coverage with a pass to Grimes for an open three. He's alone posting up on Garland on this play, and he's going to fake like he's going to the rim, which forces Allen to provide weak side help, forcing Osman to switch onto Hartenstein, but this opens up a pass to Toppin in the corner for three. Here, he's got the ball with Gabe Vincent on him, and he recognizes that Zeller is going to have to focus on Hartenstein and Lowry is going to be worrying about the corner, but this leaves Julius Randle open, so Brunson just takes a pivot to get a good angle, and he finds Randle for the finish. I probably wouldn't put Jalen Brunson in that upper echelon S tier of playmaking guards, but he's really underrated in that aspect. I think people look at his assist numbers and we're kind of jaded by some of the playmakers in the NBA right now that are getting like 10 plus assists per night. It feels like that's become a lot more common over the years. Just because he's getting roughly six assists per game doesn't mean he's a bad playmaker by any means. And especially considering the fact he's playing alongside Julius Randle, who does a lot of playmaking off the wing. I've got a feeling that his playmaking is only going to start to shine more and more as he gets more reps with this Knicks team under his belt, and they kind of iron things out on the offensive end. Jalen Brunson kind of seems like the topic of debate lately. I understand it's the offseason, so there's really not a whole lot to talk about, and somehow everyone's debating the best guards in the Eastern Conference. And anytime Jalen Brunson gets mentioned, I see people kind of like cast him off like he's, you know, not worthy of being in the discussion of best guards in the East. I'm not saying he is the best guard in the East, but I am saying that he should at least be mentioned and him being mentioned is probably not as ridiculous as you think. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, all that stuff helps me out a ton. If you want to support the channel further, you can check the link in the description to become a patron. Once again, a huge thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Check out that link below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.